I'm Eric and I'm from Games on Hyper. Let's look at the replication subsystem today. And that is a cool one because this is making sure that you are able to replicate common things very easily from one point. Let's dive into this. When you open up the replication subsystem uh, project, you will see this, this map and it shows okay which components to add to your character and uh, it also shows which functionality it has. So let's see how that is assigned. So we open up uh, the game mode and here you see uh, which class here is assigned. And this is an example character and this example character has this replication subsystem component assigned. If you uh, migrated it uh, into yours, you can just add it by adding a component. And when that component is added, then you have all kinds of functionalities, uh, which I will show you right now. I am uh, going to start this project right up with two players and both as client, as an example. So now I've started up two clients. You can see that in the screen, this is client two, that is client one. And I'm now standing uh, before the animation replication. And if I'm entering this one, it will play this animation. And if I open and play this one with that one, it will also play that animation on the other client. It will also do that for sounds replication. Um, like so. It is also playing on the other uh, client because I'm playing that sound attached on that character and we are able to spawn actors <laughs> and now i have this uh, example box that is spawning attaching to uh, to this head just as an example um, and all of this is not done on in the code itself of uh, uh, of that interaction etc but it is calling an event in the replication subsystem so i will show you how that is done so let's show uh, how uh, these events are being called on overlap. One of these boxes, so this animation box, sound box, and spawn box, it's going to call an event in this character. And uh, we have play animation, play sound, and toggle actor. And the play animation, the only thing what's doing, it's getting the replication subsystem. And in that subsystem, it is calling different events, like um, uh, uh, initialize, uh, the multicast montage uh, as you saw it has a lot of different events which you can call uh, attach sound uh, latent montages sounded locations um, uh, uh, spawn actors um, like spawn actor uh, on the server um, and all of these have a lot of inputs so now if you are programming something and Think of a combat system and you have the combat system and you want to play animations in uh, when equipping a weapon, when firing a weapon, when uh, uh, performing a certain combat animation with a sword. All of these places you would need to call an animation function and instead of uh, programming that code in a specific uh, spot uh, like uh, uh, perform melee attack, and trying to have all kinds of remote procedure calls like server, multicasting, uh, replication uh, of the variables. Instead of doing it customly, you can do it always in the replication sus subsystem. So it always has one single point. So these are the example events of playing an animation. It's simply clicking an animation you are able to bind it on when a montage is finished and if it's finished uh, do something now, for now we are printing or uh, we also able to execute notifies um, uh, also like if you have a reload animation you want to probably notify when the ammo is in the weapon itself because then you want to show that the ammo is uh, added to the weapon so uh, you are able to give notifies uh, with it like uh, Mo um, uh, mo received, and then you're able to check uh, mo received. Is that notify being triggered? If so, then we can execute our logic that we want at that spot. Um, for sounds, uh, attaching it uh, or uh, not attaching it is all able to uh, to, to, to switch easily. Obviously. 
the attenuation settings is set by default on the, the default attenuation settings, but you're able to override it. And the actor, it is spawning an actor, uh, which we uh, are able to spawn with a socket name. But we can identify spawned actors by giving it a name when we spawning it. And based on the name, we are able to access it in a later stage. So uh, if you spawn an item in the world, and uh, well, for instance, uh, with a bow and arrow, and you spawn an arrow in the world, uh, you want to be able to access that arrow in a later stage. Now, if you want to do that, then you are going to search for that name and the name lives on the server, and then we can access it again and destroy it later on. Okay, I think this gives off a good of you. I hope you like it. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.